Hello and welcome inside the broadcast booth of the Cleveland Indians Radio Network. This is Ryan Wallace getting set here for the third game of this series between the Tampa Bay Rays and Cleveland Indians. The Indians on a bit of a, on a struggle bus right now. There's rumors that Terry Francona has lost the locker room after winning on opening day. The Indians have lost seven straight, so they entered this game at one and seven. We'll see if they can rebound. They'll be going up against right-hander Cody Anderson who gave the race eight strong innings in his first start of the season. Two hits, two walks, two Ks at 2.25 ERA. Here from Tropicana Field in Tampa Bay for this matchup, Starling Marte will lead things off here for the Cleveland Indians. Here is the first pitch from Anderson. That's going to be a called strike high and inside. Count now 0-1 on Marte. Now here's the 0-1 pitch to the Indians left fielder. He ropes that out into right field, but right at the right fielder, Cole Calhoun. Let's take a look at your Indians starting lineup. Left fielder, Starling Marte. Center fielder, Christian Yell. Shortstop, Carlos Correa. DH, Victor Martinez. Third base, Michael Franco. Right fielder, Stephen Piscotti. Catcher, Blake Swihart. First baseman, Will Myers. And second baseman, Devin Travis. Here is Christian Yelch off to a rough start in the series. One for nine with four strikeouts. We'll see if he can turn that around. First pitch to Yelch outside. 1 0. Oh. Here are your umpires for today's game. The crew chief, home plate umpire Woody Keller. First baseman, Ed Drummond. Second base, Clyde Washington. And over at third base, Earl Hendricks. Full count pitch to Yelich, and he lines that out to left field, or lifts that out, I should say. But it was a lazy fly ball out there for Melky Cabrera. And that would be all for the first inning, as the innings could not really do anything. The Rays will be going up against left-hander C.J. Wilson, who went seven innings in his debut start on the year. A lot of nine hits, one walk, six strikeouts, but ended up losing the game. He'll look to get a different result this time around. He'll be going up against... First, Ian Kinsler, the Tampa Bay Rays second baseman, who's gotten off to a bit of a slow start this year. You see there, evident by that 216 batting average. Here is the first pitch to Ian Kinsler, and it's a curveball, and that'll be called a ball. So 1-0. Now here's the 2-1 pitch to the second baseman. That is lined out to center field, but Yelich right there. And that is out number one. Let's take a look at the Rays lineup. Second baseman Ian Kinsler. Center fielder Kevin Kiermeyer. Third baseman Nolan Arenado. First baseman Travis Shaw. Right fielder Cole Calhoun. Shortstop Brandon Crawford. Left fielder Melky Cabrera. Catcher James McCann. And your DH rounding out the lineup. Adam Ford. So here's Kiermeyer. One for eight or two strikeouts in the series. And a very bad 179 average here to begin play. His bat has not made the trip north from spring training. Clearly... Here's the first pitch to Kiermaier from Wilson. He fouls that away on one. Oh, one pitch to the center fielder of the Tampa Bay Rays. And he lays down a bunt. Franco is going to try to barehand it, throw it over to first, but he is safe. Kiermaier showing off the wheels, able to beat out that bunt for an infield single. Let's take a look at this in show motion. Just an excellent bunt. Laid it right off the sweet spot of the bat. That's what you're taught to do as a kid. Almost like you're trying to catch the ball there at that spot of the bat. And clearly Kiermaier did just that. Now here's a 1-2 count to Travis Shaw. Kiermaier on second, two outs. And Shaw lifts that out to left field. Does it have enough to get out? No, it doesn't. Hits right off the top of the wall. But doesn't matter. Kiermaier easily home. Shaw tried for second, but he is out at second base, so at least we keep Shaw off a second. Still, the Tampa Bay Rays get one run there in the bottom of the first. We'll head to the second. Tampa Bay up 1-0. Nothing doing for any of the teams in the second, third, or fourth. So now we'll go to the top of the fifth inning. 1-1 count to Steve Piscotti. Ropes into left field and it one hops off the wall. Piscotti rounding first, heading for second. Here comes the throw. Piscotti is safe, clearly in ahead of the throw. And now the Indians are going to try to get that run back here in the fifth. With a runner in scoring position and no outs. Look at this short, compact swing from the right fielder, Steven Piscotti. And that's exactly what the Tribe needed to try to get back into this game. And now here is the catcher. Blake Swihart 0 for 1 in this game with a fly out there in the second inning. You see, that was Piscotti's first double of the year here in the second week of the season. 
And Swihart going to be looking to get this ball into the outfield to try to get Piscotty home. Piscotty, you know, his speed isn't the best, but, you know, he could still get home on a single to the outfield. Anderson only at 37 pitches here through four innings. And here is the pitch from Anderson, and that's going to be a ball outside 1-0. 1-2 now to the catcher, Blake Swihart. And here is the pitch, and it's a curveball. And that is lifted out to... Right field, Calhoun camps under it right on the warning track in front of that action team advertisement there in right field. Makes the grab, throw from Crawford, but Piscotty well ahead of the throw there into third base. Now the Indians have a man on third with just one away here in the top of the fifth inning. Not much Calhoun could have done. That ball was just hit way too far. He couldn't really get a running start because he was right up against the wall. Now here is the former Tampa Bay Ray. Will Myers 0 for 1 today. A ground out in the third inning. Man on third. And Myers doing... Uh, I thought he was going to do a little first pitch swing in there. That's what he tends to do. But he surprised all of us. And he takes that strike 0 and 1. And there's a shot of Rays manager Kevin Cash. Of course hoping that his team not only pulls out the W today. But uh, does pretty well this season. Now here's the 0 1 pitch. And Myers laces that into right center field. And that's going to drop... Piscotti easily comes around to score. Now Myers rounding second. He's going to try for third here. Can Myers make it into third safely? Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. The umpire calls Myers out at third base after a heck of a throw by Kevin Kiermaier to the cutoff, man. Let's check this out again. Oh, I don't know. I thought Myers got in there, but regardless, we'll head to the bottom of the fifth. 0-1 count, and that ball is laced, but right at the second baseman, Devin Travis. And that'll do it here for the bottom of the fifth inning. We're through five here in Tampa Bay. Score still knotted up, 1-1. One one. Bottom of the seventh now here from the Tropicana Field. Wilson is 107th pitch of the day. That's a curveball hit right out to the first baseman, Will Myers. Myers steps out of the bag himself, and that'll do it here in the seventh inning. We're getting close to the ninth inning here. Team still not up at one. Great pitcher's duel here from Tampa Bay. Yimmy Garcia going to enter here for the bottom of the eighth inning. Nothing doing for the Indians in the top of the eighth. This is Garcia's fifth appearance of the season. He's pitched seven innings, seven strikeouts. Left-handers only hitting a buck 67 off of him. Let's see if he can keep this game tied. Called strike to the catcher, James McCann, to start things off. Now the 0-1 pitch. Slider, swing and miss. So now McCann in a quick 0-2 count. Let's see here. Garcia can get McCann out. He does strike out for Yimi Garcia's eighth of the year. Only on three pitches as well. That's what you'd like to see coming out of the bullpen. Let's get a look at this. Just that filthy slider. McCann swung right under it, really overmatched by it. And that is out number one here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And now we're going to see a pinch hitter, Leroy Brasky, will be entering the game here for the DH, Adam Ford. So Ford's day is done. And let's see. So Brasky clearly overmatched by Yimby Garcia's fastball there. It's pretty difficult to come off the bench cold and have to face a 94 mile per hour fastball. You see there in show motion. Count is 0 and 1. Here's the pitch from Garcia, and that's well high. Count evens up at 1 and 1. Sixth pitch of the inning from Garcia, and Brasky fouls it off towards the third base line. Now here is the 1 and 2 pitch from the young reliever Garcia. He strikes him out. Brasky go back to the bench. Only got four pitches to work with there, and now he has to go sit back down, unfortunately. But Garcia, on only four pitches, strikes out Brasky. It's now two strikeouts in the inning on seven pitches. We'll see if Garcia can strike out the side. He'll be facing the Rays' leadoff hitter, Ian Kinsler, who has gone 0 for 3 today. He's not done a very good job setting the table for his lineup mates behind him as he fouls that pitch off. Count is 0 and 1. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning, and Kinsler takes that changeup for a strike. Count is 0-2. Here's Garcia's 10th pitch of the inning. Going to try to keep this game once again tied at 1. He's going back to the slider. Swing and a miss. Strike 3. He gets Kinsler swinging. Garcia strikes out the side on 10 pitches. And we'll head here to the top of the ninth. 
Score still knotted up 1-1 here from Tropicana Field. Top of the ninth here, runners on first and second for V-Mart, and they're going to try to go, and Martinez can't get the bunt down. Yelich, he's out at third base. They're counting on Martinez to get the bunt down, but unfortunately that is not going to happen. Now, Now wait a minute, it appears Christian Yelich, he's walking towards the dugout and down into the locker room. It appears that he's injured. Looks like he was in a little bit of pain there, so I doubt we'll see him again. Uh, I imagine that Tito Francona is going to get... Gregor Blanco out to replace Yelich in the field and in the lineup, so we'll see if that is indeed the case. But now 0-2 count to V-Mart, and he grounds it to the second baseman, and Martinez out of first. But meanwhile, Correa moves up to third base, so you see the Tampa Bay Rays fans there in the background ringing their cowbells, but the shortstop Carlos, Carlos Correa now at third base. With two away, and here is the young stud third baseman, Michael Franco, 0 for 3 today. A couple of pop-outs and a fly-out two innings ago. Franco looking to just hit that ball anywhere in the outfield and give the Indians a 2-1 lead going into the bottom of the ninth inning. We'll see if he can do just that. A couple practice swings there for Franco, and here is the first pitch to the young third baseman. He swings and misses, overmatched by that 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Count is 0-1. Here is the 0-1 pitch, and swing and a miss. He's got Franco looking a little silly up there. Seems like Franco wasn't really expecting that slider, but regardless, count is now 0-2. We'll see what the Rays reliever has. Correa takes his lead off of third base. The 0-2 pitch. Oh, that was a close one. Surprise that was not called a strike. That hasn't been consistent with what the umpire has been calling today, but I'm sure Franco will be happy to take that 1-2 and two count now. Not many fans here today at Tropicana Field, but the ones that are here definitely engaged in this game, hoping their Rays can get to the bottom of the ninth. Still tied 1-1 as Franco... That was a nice swing. Just has to straighten that out just a bit. And then that would have made this game 2-1, no doubt about it. Once again, the 1-2 pitch from Connett. And that's going to be chopped right in front of the catcher, McCann. McCann feels it clean. He throws over to first base, Travis Shaw. And Shaw fields it cleanly. And that'll do it for the top of the ninth. So we'll head to the bottom of the ninth with the home nine looking to perhaps walk it off. Score still 1 1. Bottom of the ninth, Dylan Batances, or I'm sorry, Yimmy Garcia is still in there. And Garcia manages to saw the batter off, feels the ball himself. He's like, no, don't worry, guys. I'll do this on my own. And he managed to get through two innings unscathed. We'll go to extra innings here from Trap and Field at Tampa Bay. Score tied 1 1. Top of the 10th inning here, man on first for the first baseman, Will Myers. One for three today with a double and that lone RBI. He has been responsible for all of the Rays' offense today. Here is the 0-0 pitch, and Myers, a little first pitch swing, and that ball is blasted out to left field, and that ball is gone. Home run. Will Myers, the former Tampa Bay Ray, killing his former team here in extra innings. With a two-run shot to straightaway left field. And the Indians, maybe not dead now, up 3-1. to one, Thanks to that 425-foot shot from the first baseman, Will Myers. Indians lost seven straight coming into this game. But now it looks like they're in a perfect position to end that losing streak. And you see Myers, he knew it right when he left this bat. No doubt about it. That ball's not hitting the catwalk, but... Boy, did that one get hit a mile. Wow. Your attention, please. So now we'll head to the bottom of the 10th. Dylan Batances coming in his fourth appearance of the season. He's pitched two and two thirds innings to this point. Five strikeouts. Has yet to allow a hit. He'll start off by facing the right fielder, Cole Calhoun. He'll be facing the five, six, seven hitters in the raised lineup. Cole, Cole Calhoun, Brandon Crawford, and Melky Cabrera. And he starts off Calhoun with a knuckle curve for a strike. And obviously... Rays manager Kevin Cash a little bit nervous. Obviously, his team was in the game until that two-run shot. Of course, he'd like his team to pull out its third one of the season. Rays coming to the season not much better than the Indians. They're only 2-5. and five. 
Here is the 0-2 pitch from Batances to Cole Calhoun. Swing and a miss. Strike three on that nasty knuckle curve of Batances's. I know I would not want to be in the batter's box facing that young gentleman right there. Flamethrower, but can also get that knuckle curve over the plate. So now we'll see Brandy Crawford 0 for 3 today already with a strikeout. And Ray's hopes dwindling, only two outs to work with. Here's the first pitch from Batances to Crawford and called strike one on that knuckle curve. Rays fans still ringing their cowbells, hoping that it'll bring their home nine some luck. We'll see if, in fact, it does. 0-1 pitch and another called strike. Crawford takes two strikes here to begin the at-bat. Both beautiful knuckle curves. But the count is now 0-2 in favor of Batances. Now here is the 0-2 pitch from Batances. Swing and a miss. Strike three called once again on that knuckle curve. And your Cleveland Indians, one out away from ending this seven-game losing streak. We'll see if they can do it. Melky Cabrera steps up to the dish, 0 for 3 with the ground outs in the seventh inning. We'll see if Batances can shut the door, pick up a save. First pitch, knuckle curve. It's fouled away. Cat is now 0-1. Cabrera represents the Rays' last hope here. Perhaps keep this game alive. 0-1 pitch from Batances. Swing and a miss on that 99 mile per hour four seam fastball. Now the Rays down to their final strike here on this Thursday afternoon in Tampa Bay, Florida. Here is the 0-2 pitch. Can Batances strike out another batter? This one will be fouled away, so we'll have to continue. Count obviously still. 0-2, oh, Cabrera shaking his head a little bit there. So once again, the 0-2 pitch from Batances. That one is low-lined. I almost said loaned, lying down the third baseline. So the Rays not dead yet as Cabrera gets on first via that single to left field. And he's happy about it. He knows that he just gave his team another chance to keep this game going. So now we'll see... The catcher for the Rays, number 34, James McCann, 0 for 3 today as well. A lot of these Rays hitters, 0 for 3. McCann struck out his last time up in the eighth inning. So McCann does represent the tying run. We'll see if he can perhaps get on base or maybe even hit a home run and tie the game up. He's not going to do it that way. Overmatched by that 99 mile per hour fastball. 0-1. See, the Indians have the advantage in the hit department. Ten hits today for them compared to six for the home nine. Here is the 0-1 pitch from Batances. It's inside. Count now moves to 1-1. One one. Batances looking for his first save here on the young season. 1-1 one one pitch. That's going to be a call strike. That could have gone either way, but that knuckle curve managed to just nip the corner, I suppose. So, regardless, the count is 1-2. and two. You see McCann, he wasn't too happy about that. But regardless, 1-2 and two count. Batanz is looking to shut the door in the bottom of the 10th. Swing and a miss, strike three. Called on that knuckle curve. And the Indians, their demise was short-lived. The rumors will die for at least one day as Francona finally can exhale a sigh of relief. His Cleveland Indians have finally won their second game of the season. Final score of this game, three to one.